Just, uh, Where are you? I am in Sydney, Australia. Mm. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Okay. Peter Scolari, after, you were in the very first scene of Girls all those years ago. What was it like yeah. saying goodbye to the show after all those years? It, um, you know, it's always bittersweet, isn't it? Mm. Uh, you know, in our experience, when we actually have a chance to acknowledge uh, that this is it, that, you know, we're, we're taking this thing off the grid and we're not going any further, um, you don't always know, um, but sometimes you do. And in this case, for the first time, maybe the only time, I began to reflect on the six years. When you know the ship is still sort of at sea and moving somewhere, um, you, I don't dwell on the past. I'm obsessed with the present. But we knew, you know, we were told this is, we're, we're calling it. And the director of photography on the show is a brilliant uh, guy named Tim Ives. And he shared something with me on the set on my last day. We were uh, filming down in Washington Square Park, which was here in New York City, which was exhilarating. And uh, he said, I got to tell you, you and in your relationship, um, a wonderful actor named Ethan Phillips, who's actually an old acquaintance, old friend of mine, from 25 years ago in Hollywood, another lifetime, who plays my uh, Tad's uh, lover in a show. Um, we were filming together with, with Lena on that last day. And Tim Ives said, uh, you know, you guys are just about the only healthy relationship left in the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was taking a knock at anybody. You know, Lena speaks, uh, a brand, uh, I don't mean a commercial brand, a, a very personal signature uh, of, of truth. Say what you will about girls in its, uh, in its solipsism and the obsession that these girls uh, have had and what's been developed from that over the years. Um, no one can question the integrity uh, of the writing because girls in some ways is um, a story about what happens with people, uh, young, in, in, in this case, some young people and, and others uh, who are self-obsessed. Things don't go so well. Uh, any life lived, you know, on, on self-will, just wanting, getting, give me, you know, can hardly be considered a success. I read that somewhere uh, some some of your listeners uh watchers viewers will know where that's from um, so that's what tim said on the last day and and I, I think that i guess the reason i brought that up is that's the answer to your question uh, what was it like coming to an end there it was a it was a revelation not not epic not on a global scale just in a, on a very in a very personal way it was very it became very meaningful to me um, as as sometimes things do um, they do become meaningful to me when somebody else <laughs> puts it into a kind of perspective when I get out of my own you know uh, ego based thoughts and I realized how lucky I've been to be a part of this show. Uh, this fantastic, disturbing uh, show about self-image and self-obsession uh, at, at turns really uh, an incredibly healthy, uh, touching things, uh, uh, touching show, and at other times, you know, a disturbing uh, show about self-obsessed uh, people who are sexual and seeking some sort of clarification of their self-image through sexual experience, which is the hobgoblin of the youth um, of our, in our culture, in all cultures, it always has been, always will be. 
um, you, you almost have to lose everything before you know what really matters. So I don't know how you dodge that. I don't know that, that you can. But girls was a life changing experience for me. And congratulations, Peter. It won you an Emmy last year. Um, and a, like a really like let's quickly talk about that Emmy win last year. Somewhat unusual circumstances, yeah. where yeah, where you initially didn't get uh, nominated, but uh, due to um, uh, some some rules and things like that, they uh, had to uh, add someone to the list. You got added, and then you won it. So you're one of the few people, maybe one of the only people in, in sort of Emmy history or with the, like a lot of awards, which we know you got the least votes to get nominated, but you got the most votes to win. Well, I got, I was in, I guess the way it was explained to me was that I was in seventh place. Yes. So technically not the least number of votes, but, but no, just no, not no. enough, not enough in the first count based on these, you know, somewhat technical rules. And, and then I moved up, you know, Bob Newhart uh, is an old friend. I spent seven years in a TV series with him and uh, he won in this category a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he was uh, at the Emmys and it was a great uh, connection reunion because I live in New York. He's in Los Angeles. He, took me aside in the dressing room and he said, uh, you know, I already have one of these, so I don't have to win. He says, I hope it's you. Incredible. What, a, in, what an incredibly gracious thing to say. And he, uh, he pointed out after I had won that, uh, he said, you realize you, you jumped from seventh place to first somehow which hadn't occurred to me. Um, so I'm, yeah, I was very grateful. Uh, you know, I, I think there are a couple of, historically, a couple of similar uh, anomalies in, in the process, um, but I can't think of any. And um, it added a, a sort of, a, not a luster, but a, a sort of, it filled me with a, a lot of a shock, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that began with the nomination because because it came later than everybody else's and then to win just seemed kind of beautifully preposterous mm. and how like incredible for like um you to win that category uh the same category that bob newhart won a couple years earlier uh and you were competing against bob too after like all those years like uh you you had three nominations for Newhart. Bob was never able to win for Newhart. You both won your first Emmys in the same category a couple years oh, yeah. apart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, between um, Bob and myself, Tom Poston on the old Newhart show, uh, well, the later old Newhart show, not the Bob Newhart show. No. Uh, Ju Julia Duffy, who uh, I had such a fantastic time with and a fr fantastic friendship she lost six emmys there we must have had between bob and tom julia and myself and i with the least number of nominations we must have lost i think bob had seven or eight 20 20 emmys in eight years mm -hmm. yeah we uh, it came around somehow amazingly for for me and bob so winning must have been nice. That must have meant something to win last. You know, I'm to be honest with you, Matt, it is an incredible thing. The, the first important answer to your question is, yes, an incredibly nice thing. I just will share with viewership that I'm a, I'm a weird, I'm a weird guy. And I'm certainly not alone in that in my field. But I was filled with a, you know, a quiet, not, not an exhilaration or an exuberance. I, I was made very quiet and my wife and family can tell you that's weird. Boy, look who's not, look who's got nothing to say. That's not like me, uh, as, may, as maybe you've learned already in our brief time talking together, but I, I really got quiet. I'm, you know, I was 60, I had just turned 61 years 
uh, old uh, the week before. And I'd made a, I'd made a piece with, um, you know, losing the Emmy because that's what any sane person predicts when there's five or six of you in a category, you just say, well, and, and you're talking about great actors like, uh, like Bradley Whitford, who I admire so much, uh, Bob, but Peter McNichol is one of my favorite actors who was, was, you know, then excluded from the category because, uh, because he didn't, you know, well, technically wasn't supposed to be in it, but who knew? Somebody was it? Somebody at Gold Derby who who found that out? We, we did it. it. Yes, was it I, you? It wasn't me, but we uh, someone at Gold Derby did. Uh, I think uh, check with the Academy when the nominations came out, just to clarify um, yeah. how that that happened. So, um, yeah, I, if somebody it, doesn't make that call, then Peter remains in the character and and might have won his own. Such yeah. a brilliant actor, mm -hmm. uh, and Marty Mull, who I've always loved, uh, you know, and Larry David's a, a, an icon and in, in some respects an underrated actor because everybody thinks of him as such a, mm. you know, he's so funny and he's crazy and mm. he has to act that character, yeah. you know, um, an incredible category. So I, you know, made it very clear and had made my peace with not winning the award. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's a shock. When you said, um, when you said you're, uh, when you, uh, ex accepting the award, Peter, uh, you thanked your wife, uh, for sitting in the hot tub when she didn't want to, what did that mean? My wife is a brilliant actress, uh, dramatic musical theater, incredible. And we've been together about 12 years, um, 12 very good years, you know, and, and again, we're not kids. So uh, I can't believe you've got the quote there uh, talking about the hot tub. You know, there are things uh, when you get together and, and find your soulmate later in life, there are accommodations uh, that are made. There are things that you always thought mattered to you and had to be a certain way. And then you just put them aside and say, well, hell with that, you know, makes him happy. I'll sit in the damn hot tub. We we were being put up in some fancy hotel, I think the Four Seasons, and uh, it was we we had decided that the the, the weekend of the Emmys and being nominated, we were going to celebrate all of that. We weren't going, you know, I wasn't going to win, but let's let's celebrate all of this, and that included amazingly uh, her getting into a hot tub. She hates hot water. She she showers she she never takes a bath you know i'm an aging ex-athlete i'm with the soak the mineral salts and the, you know i do the whole i'm you know i spend like 45 minutes in the bath which freaks her out you're gonna wrinkle to death and she to my shock i said come on get in the hot tub look where we are it's california it's gorgeous there's sun and there's imported palm trees and we're at the four seasons hotel she said okay you know, I should have known right right then and there that it was something you know, that the world was sort of tilting on its axis a little mm. bit. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the other thing you said when you were up on stage was that uh, you thanked your family for um, helping you be someone who is better at listening. And I thought to, like, sort of bring it back to girls, how is that skill, how is that skill of listening important for you as an actor on the show girls wow what a great question it's very personal so why don't i try and return that in a personal way mm -hmm. uh i have three sons and a daughter a couple of different marriages from whence they sprang um, it's been rough you know divorces aren't easy my older children, Nick and Joe, have, have spent most of their young life without me around, and that's on me. And I've had to make amends and uh, continue to try and be meaningful, or, but more than meaningful, um, to just be present and available to hear what's going on. Um, my young son has struggled with, you know, things an amazing guy. They're all amazing. 
my daughter too. And they, you know, they let me, they let me participate in the highs and the lows. I was, I don't know about you, I was not like this. I loved my father. When I was 15, 16, 17, there was much more that was kept from my father than was shared with him. That does not seem to be the case. I know my daughter thinks she's got some things going on that I don't know about, but my ex-wife, her mother spies on her, so I know some things. Oh, I, hopefully she won't hear this. So we know they're good. They're very good people. You want to say good kids, it sounds like they play well with others. They do. It's not that. My middle son, Joe, uh, is a musician in Los Angeles, gifted, gifted singer. Uh, sings under this name, uh, this pop name, Luca. It's his middle name, Luca. Uh, we've had real tough times uh, for reasons that uh, he, he need not ever explain, but but I know he, he's explained them to me. And it's, you know, I, I was not there for him when he was a young, young boy and young man. But we have, because of his uh, gigantic character, his, uh, his decency, you know, he has let me cobble together some kind of presence and meaning in his life to be, to have the honor to be his father. Uh, in order to do that, I have had to put aside what I want out of my relationship with my son or my daughter, my sons, my wife, my friends, my co-workers. Uh, you know, actors, we can be like the characters and girls, self-obsessed. And uh, But, you know, Quality of life actually sits on top of not, not what we get, but what we give and, uh, and how we're able to listen. So that's the privilege, uh, you know, that I, has been granted me for some reason, you know, outside of my uh, career or maybe alongside of my career. The upshot of which is, I became a better actor. Who knew? Who knew? And um, you know that sort of erupted out of my uh, inner psyche when I won the award. And after that, I was almost tongue-tied. But I knew I wanted to get that message particularly out to my son Joseph. My younger son and daughter, Keaton, Callie, they know. My oldest son, Nick, they know. I needed to get it out to Joe. As whether he knew or not, it was because of him uh, that I I needed to grow to uh, to earn any kind of place, you know, in, in any kind of well to be to be his father. And there have been many years where he didn't want me to be his father, uh, and. Whether I like it or not, you know, he was right. His, the depth of his emotional truth superseded or pushed out my ego-based truth or how I would like to see the world and how, don't you know, I try and all this crazy stuff that, you know, parents who are whining uh, try and sell. So, you know, they've all, they've all made me a, a better man. You know, and egotists, a lot of us actors are, have all kinds of ego problems because uh, we have like this big ego that lets us get our work done and we have this low self-esteem, you know, that has us needing, we need so much, give me, give me a, a nomination, give me awards, uh, you know, give me career, give me offers, give me the roles I think I'm good enough to play. It's all, you know, it, it comes with the business and, um, I'm shocked that I won an award when I stopped trying, you know, when I stopped uh, so desperately needing that kind of stuff. It almost makes you think that there's, you know, a God in the universe, but it, it, whether there is or isn't, there's power. I know that there's great power, greater than all of us, all around us, you know, compassion, kindness, um, not always justice, 
not always things going right. You know, it's it's a it's a terrible, sometimes you know, dangerous, a very dangerous world, a scary, scary place, and it's also staggeringly beautiful. And uh, so, anyway, I'm long-winded answer to your question, but um, but that's that's you know, I, ha I have to listen. You know, I have to. I've had to learn how, despite my my own you know, solipsism, my own obsession with myself, I have to shut up and care about and give attention to what somebody else has to say. Mm. And uh, finally, Peter, looking back, like your relationship, uh, like your character, Taz's relationship with Hannah on Girls is also fraught um, and uh, like the communication there is interesting over the course of six seasons. What uh, from those six seasons do, are you going to, or have you, sort of miss the most or you look back with particular fondness? Um, I miss, I miss Lena. She said a bunch of wonderful things about me. And what I experienced with her from the, the pilot episode to, you know, over the course of the years was she became a, she evolved, you know, in some way that, you know, Becky Ann Baker and I used to talk about it as being pretty much incomprehensible. From a neophyte with a camera and directing, you know, kind of a startup writer who had made a, a pretty good independent film called Tiny Furniture to this broad spectrum showrunner, uh, accomplished director she knew everything about lenses about light that you know that, that people take 10 and 20 years to learn about she'd ask questions she'd listen um as she became iconic you know i felt um not a distance from her but just a sense that she's gracious with everybody you know she's she's she gives everybody full attention and it's easy to think i've experienced this with other people it's easier to think that you're special to her and and maybe maybe we were uh and maybe i'll find out maybe our paths will cross again but as as the show ended on that day there were times she would come over and just almost sit on my lap and just uh and be like a daughter you know and I was reluctant to get into that space with her and presume upon, you know, anything about what that meant because she'd make the person serving coffee on the set feel that good. So I miss, I miss her. Uh, she's, she's a rare bird, really exceptional. I miss a lot of people there. I've had fantastic experiences. Uh, but, I hope she's not the one who got away. You know, the one who I could have maybe even become friends with. It's, it's awkward when you're 30 some odd years older than somebody. You know, even a job I'm doing now, this week at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, there are people I have a great affection for. They're 30 years younger than I am. And I thanked one the other day. I said, hey, thanks for taking me in. You know, they're like, thanks for taking us in, you know. You're like older and you know some shit, you know, and uh, I know a little bit. You know. mm. So I think yeah. it, it comes down. That's the answer, really, Matt, to your question. It, you know, comes down to this person who created something, you know, out from that really came from. Um, and I think will tend to always come from something very personal. And I mean, yeah, she shared that with 20 million viewers and what have you or more. Yeah. Um, but I was right in the pocket, you know, I was right in the sleeve of that uh, with her and felt like she was my daughter on some weeks. And we would watch her do things, you know, things would happen in episodes that I wasn't in. And I sit at home with my wife and watch as an audience member and I'd go, hey, what the hell are you doing? Don't steal that bicycle. What do you, and get mad. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of go, what the hell is the matter with you, Peter? It's a TV show, <laughs> but uh, you know, I care. I care very deeply.
Mm. And that is, that, that's like a thing about acting, like it brings together people who are 30 years old or 30 years younger and like in that sort of community, their peers. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today, Peter. It was so uh, great to talk about girls and uh, it was such a joy to see you win the Emmy last year. So um, all the best for this year, for the final year uh, at the Emmys for this series. And uh, yeah, and all the best with you and your family and everything. Thank you, Matt. Thanks very much, buddy. No worries.